Hey, hey, winning season fam. Welcome back to another episode of the Winning Season Podcast. I'm Jacqueline Swilly, your host, and today I'm bringing you along for a recap of an absolutely amazing event that I just attended, and this is hot off the press. I went through my notes today, recording this, releasing this episode as you hear it two days after the event. So I definitely have a cup of coffee next to me. I just pulled a fresh espresso shot, actually a double, so that I can keep the same energy that was in that room for the summit. All right, so let me tell you, the setting of the Women in AI Summit, it was held at Webster Hall in New York City. This is an iconic location. When I moved to New York, I heard people talking about the parties at Webster Hall. And to be honest with you, I have not yet experienced the nighttime part of this uh, venue. So I will definitely check that out. Maybe, maybe um, I'll give y'all an episode of what it's like to kick it there. I don't know. Maybe that might be just for like resilient leaders for the alumni community. So depending on how that event goes, I'll keep you posted. Let me get back to the topic. Women in AI Summit. So first of all, the place is amazing. If you look it up, Webster Hall, New York City, you'll see it's a really cool venue. But one thing I was not prepared for, it was freezing in that building. So imagine this, I get in, the line was long. I did post some images on my Instagram of the line going into the event. So you can see what that looked like. It was, people were excited. And uh, I checked my coat. As soon as I registered for the event, the coat check was right there. Grabbed a cup of coffee, mingling, starting to meet people. The vibe was really awesome. The swag is always dope at the Female Quotient, which was one of the co-hosts for this event. So it was co-hosted by Female Quotient, the FQ and Attention, ATTN. So I'm sure they'll be sharing their recaps as well. I'll try to link them up to this episode if they have shared their recaps. But let me get back to the point how it was freezing. After the second session, y'all, people were putting their jackets on, their scarves, their gloves that's how cold it was so I just did my little one finger up church hand because I'm sitting on the second row of the event tiptoed out the side door down the stairs went to coat check and the girl was like you are not the first person to come back for a coat that's how cold it was nevertheless I grabbed my coat and stopped at the Q coffee station and got a cup of hot water And I use that hot water as my hand warmer throughout the day. I just kept going back for hot water. Seriously, y'all, it was that cold. I probably had a little bit too much coffee, but hey, anything to stay cozy, right? So if you couldn't make it out to New York, don't worry. I'll give you the full scoop here. And you're going to feel like you were right there with me. But if you're not freezing, I mean, turn up the AC. I don't care how cold it is because that's the vibe that was in that room. So let's talk about the inside of the room. Outside of the temperature being cold, it was a complete vibe. I mean, there was black girl magic popping in every corner, the hairstyles, the fits, all of the women at this event like came to slay. It looked like a New York day where you're just walking into the subway station and you see every type of outfit and they all look phenomenal. And so that's kind of like setting the tone. The walls in this building feel like some history is steeped in there. Now, I don't know the history of the building, but the event has some serious energy. And so we're talking about innovators, engineers, advocates, tech execs, advertising folks, uh, consultants like myself, authors, entrepreneurs, lots of people in the film industry, healthcare. Y'all, it was a complete vibe all around the room, even with the chill in the air. It was incredibly warm energy, and I think that's why everyone stayed to the end of the event. And I just have to say one more time, I was legit holding my hot cup of tea like I was, like my life depended on it. But that did not stop me from getting these notes that I'm about to share with y'all. So kicking off the day, 
Chelsea Clinton blew me away moderating the panel. And she moderated the first panel. The topic was all about education, women, and healthcare. And one of my big takeaways from that panel discussion was that education has to adjust for AI. You can't teach the same and you also can't test the same. And you can't just say students can't use AI because we've all been students. Y'all know what's up. So I thought it was interesting that one of the ideas that came out of that first panel was show your work, you know, show the prompts that you use for your generative AI tool to show your thought process and how you're using it. And I thought, wow, that's so, so good because we're teaching responsible use, hopefully ethical use as well. Um, and if students are going to use it anyway, why don't we add the screenshots and show me the prompts that you use as a part of the assignment? So I'm, I don't work in a classroom, but I am an auntie. You all know that. And so this is definitely something I'm going to encourage my nieces and nephews to do is share the prompts. Now, I've had conversations with my 17-year-old nephew, who's a high school student. And one of the things that he does is share, saves all of his AI prompts into a spreadsheet so that he can go back to them, which I think is incredible. And something that I'm going to start doing myself because I don't always save the prompts that uh, work well for me in a spreadsheet. Let me know if you're doing that or not. All right, so let's hop into one of my big takeaways from the diversity in AI panels. It was more about diversity and representation. And Dr. Joy from the Algorithmic Justice League kicked things off with a message that hit home with me. And if you're not following Dr. Joy, y'all, find her on the inter internet and get on the bandwagon. She is phenomenal. The way she is so poetic, she's a poem poet as well as a computer scientist and the way that she just marries these worlds together the intersection of being a black woman and a techie it was just incredible she had people on the stage like sitting at the edge of their seats and these were her co-panelists she spoke about green ai which basically it's ai that's ethical transparent and inclusive and she had this one line that stuck with me if we're not at the table, our values and our voices are written out. Y'all, that really landed with me. If you think about it, if we as women aren't in the rooms where these technologies are created, then tech will keep getting built without considering our needs. She used this as the perfect example of ride hailing apps and how they might have prioritized safety features like harassment reporting from day one if more women had been involved early on in the design process. It was such a great reminder of why representation in tech is not optional. So let me tell you about another part of the event, AI as a tool for empowerment. So I'm going to just address this because when I was putting my notes together, I was not conflicted at all about using the word empowerment, but I do know where I hang out on the internet and in real life, women are saying we're over empowerment, give us power. And I recently had an experience where I was e-empowered. I took a class of something that I'm not good at, something that I really hadn't attempted ever. And I knew it would take me out of my comfort zone to do this class. So I did it and I was nervous and I was uncomfortable. And when I'm ready, I will share what that class was about, but I'm not there yet. But at the end of the class, I felt empowered, e-empowered to continue to take classes, to stretch myself, to get out of my comfort zone. And so when I think about AI as a tool for e-empowerment, um, empowerment that way, you know, folks are saying we need to be in power, I in, and I totally, totally agree on that. Here's the caveat. Some of us need to be in power and some of us need to be E empowered to know that we don't have to wait for an invitation to apply for those jobs. That if you're a lawyer and you've been working for years on privacy and tech, like you should totally be applying to a lot of these chief AI roles that are popping up everywhere. So that was a little tangent. Let me get back to my notes. 
One of the most inspiring sessions was all about how AI can empower underserved communities. This goes back to that first panel that Chelsea Clinton moderated. So Rishma, uh, who's the founder of Girls With Codes, she's now at the Mom Project. And she talked about how an AI project they're working on can help low-income workers access their paid leave benefits. Imagine this, that there's no formal database prior to this where folks could go to see what paid leave was available. And most women return to work after two weeks after they give birth because U.S. is, I think, the only industrialized nation that doesn't offer paid family leave. So there's a lot of red tape in that process, and a lot of people just don't know what they qualify for. So this tool from the Mom Project walks women through, and families in general, walks them through step-by-step how to see what they qualify for in terms of parental leave benefits. And it's simple, but it's powerful. So listening to her, I kept thinking, this is what AI should be doing, making life easier for everyone, not just those who already have access or privilege. It's about building tools that actually help people in a real way. And that's what got me so inspired about that session. Now, there was also a conversation on ethical AI development and women leading the way. And speaking of impactful AI, there was another big theme throughout many of the panels of that day around ethics. Dr. Joy, who I mentioned earlier, and other speakers, they really went deep into this, talking about the idea of ethical AI what it means building systems that prioritize fairness, transparency, and accountability. You know, making sure that tech doesn't just reinforce the biases that already exist in this world. And I'm so glad they brought that out because you and I both know any human walking this planet has a bias. Um, And if we are not aware of our biases, then we perpetrate those when we build technology systems. So it was it was interesting to hear how Microsoft, for example, is working to make their AI inclusive for different languages and cultural contexts. They're making sure their tools reflect the diversity of the real world, which honestly is what we need more of. And I'll pat them on the back for that because we need more of it. It's also encouraging for me to see that big companies are starting to think this way and talk about it publicly, that they're looking to women leaders also for their insight in this. So I want to talk to you about AI and creativity. There is a lot of fear out there that AI will replace us, especially those who work in creative fields. And the summit speakers had a totally different perspective, which I appreciated. They said that AI is more of a collaborator than a competitor. And I just love that. I absolutely ate that up because that's what I believe also. AI is here to support creative work, not take it over. Women in media and marketing who were on the panels throughout the day shared how they're using AI to handle repetitive tasks so they can focus on the big picture ideas and really tap into their creativity. One speaker from a major brand talked about using AI to brainstorm new marketing strategies. Um, So there's this huge fashion show of a brand that's near and dear to my heart because I worked at that store when I was an undergraduate and graduate student. How they use AI to help visualize a few of the set looks for this huge fashion show. They didn't ultimately use the ideas that they got from AI, but what it did was it helped them in their brainstorming sessions. It got the wheels turning, and they actually were able to visualize things early on in the process that, she said, potentially moved them further along in their design sessions than if they would have waited for those mock-ups to be drawn and given to them. So I really love that. It was also cool to see how they're treating AI as a member of their team. like. A lot of people mention it's a sidekick who handles some of the lifting while humans drive the creative direction. 
And I think if we can begin to look for ways where we use it as a sidekick, it can take some of that fear out of we're going to be totally replaced by everything AI. So speaking of that, AI's evolution is fast and how do we keep up or how does it keep up with us? So let's get into the speed at which AI is advancing. The stats that they shared were mind blowing. Allie K. Miller, who I have an AI crush on, I took her AI master class and then I've subsequently taken another class of hers on a different platform. She was one of the main keynotes at the event and she said that ChatGPT hit over 100 million users within a few months. That's the fastest that any major tech has taken off, followed by character AI as the second fastest um, adaptation of a tech tool. And the growth just keeps happening this fast. Staying informed about these tools is not just helpful. As leaders in various industries, it's essential that we lock in to these tools early and get comfortable with them. There's a constant reminder that while this is all incredibly exciting, we have to keep ethics and responsibility at the center of every advancement. And so while it's awesome to hop on and try out these new tools, we also need to be doing our due diligence to see if it's appropriate for the work that we're doing and making sure that we're not uploading work files that are PPI into servers. So check always with your legal teams at your office, follow the compliance for your workplace before you jump in. But also you can still get to know it without doing something using PPI data. So like they were saying, analyzing shoes, their shoe choices in the shopping cart or something like that. So try it with the stakes are low and Again, don't do anything that is against your company policy when you're trying this out. That was a theme throughout the day. But it's also on us to make sure that when we're using and building AI tools, that we're doing it in a way that benefits everyone, not just a privileged few. All right, so let me wrap this up. As I sat there with my hands warmed up from that hot cup of water, I kept thinking about what this means for us as resilient leaders. First, it is a call to stay engaged. I have been teaching a lot in the workshops that Zero Gap produces how to responsibly use AI in our work and incorporate that. I'm also going to be uh, releasing some AI tools that are companions to my books. So if you want to know about that, y'all hit me up. I'll let you know. And even if you're not directly working with AI, the way that this tech is developing will impact us all. So you want to be aware. We cannot afford to sit this one out. We have to make sure that our voices are heard and that our values, and this is something big for me, we got to make sure our values are reflected. Secondly, this summit really reminded me of the power of community. Watching all of these women share knowledge, lift each other up, inspire one another was incredible. And it's proof that when we come together, we are unstoppable. I also want to give a shout out to this amazing woman named Kate. I sat next to her. Before I went down to coat check to grab my coat, she had an extra scarf and she let me bundle up in it. And this was within a minute and a half of me meeting her. So shout out to Kate for her kindness, her generosity, and her warmth and the community vibes that she brought to the event. And finally, remember y'all, AI isn't just the future, it is happening right now. So let's be intentional, let's be responsible, and let's be bold as we shape a world where tech works for everyone. So thanks so much for joining me for this recap of the Women in AI Summit. I hope you're as fired up as I am and be sure to subscribe to the Winning Season podcast with the other resilient leaders. Share this with folks you think might enjoy this episode. I do have a link in the show notes of this episode if you want to download the PDF copy of my notes, which goes into more detail. This was kind of like the highlight. You can download that by clicking the link in the show notes. 
And until next time, y'all stay warm, stay inspired, continue to emulate excellence and eliminate excuses. Love y'all.